Hi everybody, this is Zainab Zaytoun. In this video, I'll be explaining the second part of statistics. So if you didn't see the explanation of the first part, check my previous videos. The objectives of this part is to represent statistical data on a broken line diagram, like the one you see here. The broken line diagram, and often called the polygon of frequencies, is usually used to represent frequencies, relative frequencies, cumulative frequencies, and cumulative relative frequencies of values of a quantitative character. Remember, quantitative means the character is measurable, so you can measure them by numbers like age, uh, grades, height, weight, and so on. This example is taken from Al Ahliya book. So the adjacent polygon represents the number of shoe pairs sold during a week in a shop in terms of the shoe size. Try to understand the elements of this statistical study by yourself, so read it again carefully. You should know by yourself that the character here is the shoe size, and the frequency corresponds to the number of the shoe pairs sold during a week. Now let's read this graph carefully. Also pause the video and try to read it by yourself. So here in the x-axis you have the shoe size and on the y-axis you have the frequency. And you have this broken line diagram. This one is called the polygon of frequency because the y-axis corresponds to the frequency. If the y-axis corresponds to the relative frequency, for example, this would be called the polygon of relative frequency. Now how do, we re how do we read this graph? Let's look at the dots. For this dot, for example, it corresponds for the coordinates 36, 20. What does that mean? 36 corresponds to the true size and the 20 corresponds to the frequency. This means that the frequency of the true size 36 is 20. Again, what does that mean? Since from, from, from this paragraph, you can know that the frequency also corresponds to the number of the shoe pairs sold during a week. So this means that 20 shoe pairs of size 36 was sold during the week. Now do this point by yourself. This point corresponds to the shoe size 40 and it has a frequency 35. So this means that 35 shoe pairs of size 40 were sold during a week. So what matters for us in reading this graph are the points and not the values between them. So we're only concerned about the values 36, 37, 38 and not any value between these two for example. Now another note, I want you to look at the scale on the y-axis. You can notice that each unit on the y-axis corresponds to a frequency of 5. So we're going from 0 to 5 to 10 to 15 and so on till we reach 50 till we reach 50 now i want you to look at the scale on the x axis you can see that we're going from 36 after 2 units to 37 after 2 units to 38 until we reach 42 so every 2 units you're increasing the shoe size by 1 you can also increase the shoe size by 1 every 1 unit they are both acceptable now the thing is that you're starting from 0 and then directly to 36 then to 37 and so on. This is acceptable only on the x-axis and not on the y-axis. So here since the shoe size starts from 36 in this shop till 42, it's okay to start from 36 on the x-axis. So it's fine if the first value on the x-axis is 36. Also you can ignore the scale on the x-axis. So for example if you have numbers like, so you're starting from 36, then you have 50, then you have 100, then 500, then 1000 for example, it's very hard to choose a convenient scale. So the scale on the x-axis, which corresponds to the character, doesn't matter. While on the, the y-axis, which corresponds to the frequencies, it matters. So you should only choose a convenient scale on the y-axis. Now for this example, the question is to draw the table showing the frequency of each shoe size. So pause the video and try to do it by yourself. And remember that we're only concerned about the points which are shown on the polygon. This should be the shape of the table. So the first row should always correspond for the character, which is here the shoe size, and the second one for the frequency because they asked you to to uh, show the frequency in the table and the total for sure. Now for the shoe size, you look at the x-axis. 
So look at each point and get its abscissa. And then for the frequency, also look at each point and get its ordinate. So for the first point, you have the shoe size 36 and it has a frequency 20. So the first column should be 36, 20. For the second one, the X is 37 and the Y, which is the frequency, is 25. So the second column is 37, 25. Now, if you didn't do the table by yourself, complete it in the same way I did now. This will be the completed table. And for the total, you add the frequencies and you'll get 200. Now, what if you're given the table and you're asked to, to construct the polygon of frequencies by yourself? So in this example, a study was done on the grades of a group of students. The results are represented in the table below. So you have the grade, which ranges between 8 and 20, and you have the frequencies. And you're asked to draw the polygon of frequencies. First, you need to think of the scale. Let's choose the scale on the y-axis because uh, it's what matters. So you can see that the frequencies are all 1, 3, 4 only. So for each 1 cm on the y-axis, it should correspond for a frequency of 1. Now for the values on the x-axis, which corresponds to the grades, if the scale is easy, then do it. If not, then you can just ignore the scale and put them in increasing order. But here you can see that the grades ranges between 8 and 20. So also, uh, you can use each one unit on the x-axis should correspond to one point of the grades. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, until you reach 20. But the problem is, until you reach 8 from 0, it will take so much space. What do I mean by this? So for example, if you want to take each one centimeter on the x-axis to correspond for one point on the grades, then until you reach 8, it will take too much. So you will need 20 centimeters to fit the grades between 8 and 20. For the frequencies, we're fine because the maximum frequency is 4. So as I said in the previous example, since the least grade is 8, then you can start directly from 8 and do it like this. This graph now looks much better, so we're starting from 8, 9, 10, till we reach 20. Let me put the table in front of you. So, in order to construct the polygon, you need first to construct these points. So, for the first one, you have a grade of 8 and a frequency of 1. So, the point is 8, 1. The second point is 9, 3, the third point is 10, 4, and so on. So for the first one, which is 8, 1, so you go to 8 and then to 1, this would be the first point. Now try to construct, try to locate these points by yourself. You should get these points here. These are the points that I located. So for 8, it's 1. Now for 9, it's 3. For 10, it's 4, and so on. So now I located all the points corresponding to this table. Now you only need to join these points by segments and not curves. So using your ruler, join these two points, and then these two points, and then these two points, and so on. At the end, you will get this shape. This is called again the polygon of frequency. Because the y-axis corresponds to the frequency. And we're done. Now for the same question, complete the following table, then draw the polygon of increasing cumulative frequency. So for this row, we need to fill it with the increasing cumulative frequency. So for the first one, we drop the, the same frequency. For the second value, it's the increasing cumulative frequency of 8 plus the frequency of 9, which is 4. Then we have 4 plus 4, which is 8, and so on. Keep in mind that the last value of the increasing cumulative frequency should be equal to the total frequency. Now you're asked to draw the polygon of cumulative frequency. So you need the points 8, 1, then 9, 4, then 10, 8, because you need the polygon of increasing cumulative frequency. So now pause the video, choose a convenient scale, and locate these points, then join them by segments. you should get this point, this graph. 
Now for the x-axis, I use the same scale as before and again the scale doesn't matter that much on the x-axis. Now for the y-axis, since the increasing cumulative frequency ranges between 1 and 20, so I took each 1 centimeter or 1 unit on the y-axis corresponding to 2 of the increasing cumulative frequency in order to fit them all from 0 to 20. Those numbers that I highlighted them in this uh, graph uh, corresponds to the values found in this table. So what I'm trying to say that you should show all the numbers that corresponds to the grades here and that corresponds to the increasing cumulative frequency here. Now this is the last example. Uh, this graph shows the or the diagram shows the polygon of increasing cumulative frequency. And here you have the values of the character. We don't know uh, what does the character correspond to, so for example, age or grade. It doesn't matter since we have the values. Now represent this series in a table showing the frequency and the increasing cumulative frequency. So also pause the video and try to do the table by yourself. Now for this polygon, you have the values and you have the increasing cumulative frequency. And you're also asked to show the frequency. So you'll have three rows. The first row should always co correspond, uh, should always correspond to the values of the character. So it will correspond to these numbers. And the other rows, the order of the other rows doesn't matter. So if you put the frequency, then the increasing cumulative frequency or, vo or vice versa are both acceptable. Now this should be the shape of the table. So now for the values, you look at the points. The first point has, has a value 1, the second one has 2, and till 5. So you fill them here. Now which one you can do first? Since this polygon corresponds to the increasing cumulative frequency, then you'll fill this one first. So for 1, it's 5 because it's the middle between 4 and 6. For 2, it's 8. For 3, it's 12 and so on for the increasing cumulative frequency so you fill them there is no total for the increasing cumulative frequency remember that now you need to fill the frequency usually you're given the frequency and you're asked to fill the increasing cumulative frequency now you need to do the opposite so think about it so how can we do this remember how do we obtain the increasing cumulative frequency this will help you how to, how to deduce the frequency from the increasing cumulative frequency. So for the first value, we usually drop the same frequency. So this means that the frequency of 1 should be 5. Now how did we get the second value of the increasing cumulative frequency? According to the rule of the increasing cumulative frequency, it's the frequency of 2, which we need to find, plus the increasing cumulative frequency of the previous one, which is 5. So 5 plus which number will give you 8? So it should be 3. Now do it again to check it. 5 plus 3 will give you 8. So same for 3. 8 plus which number will give you 12? So it will be 4. The fastest way to do it is to subtract the two consecutive increasing cumulative frequency. So I'll do it again. For the first frequency, you'll drop the same one. For the second one, the number that you added to 5 to get 8 is the difference between 5 and 8. So to get this number, just subtract 8 from 5, 8 and 5, you'll get 3. Now for the second one, you subtract 12 and 8, you get 4 as we did before. So we're getting the same answers. Now for this one, it's 18 minus 12. So you'll get 6, then 20 minus 18, you'll get 2. Now for the total, you add the frequencies, and to check that you did them, you did them correctly, you should get the 20, which is the last increasing cumulative frequency. So now add these numbers, you will get 20. Now I advise you to solve this exercise from the official exams by yourself and check your answers after you finish it to be sure that you understood all the material of this video. That's all for this video. We still have only one part and we'll be done with this chapter. Thanks for watching.